Hey YouTube, this is the second of my series of ramp reviews and this time we're at the Cleveland Raby Bay ramp. Now this ramp's changed a lot over the 20 or 30 years that I've been using it and all the better really. Let's take a tour of the ramp now and see what it's like. You approach the ramp along Shore Street and honestly until I looked at Google Maps I thought you turned into the ramp area but in fact you turn into William Street which then leads you into the ramp area. Because of the layout of it, it's a bit hard to tell where the street ends and the ramp area starts, but if you look at it on Google Maps, it becomes obvious, not that it matters at all. The sign announcing that the boat ramp turn is coming up is a bit smaller than some I've seen, but nevertheless, it's very hard to miss the turn if you keep your eyes open. And because I've been using this ramp for so long, I just want to set up some terms of reference here. The area that you see circled in yellow now is what I call the old ramp. And this area is the area that I call the new ramp. I'll be using these terms throughout the video when referring to each ramp. As you enter and drive down Woodland Street, the Redland Boat Club is on your left. The clubhouse is on the corner of Shore and William Street and their parking area is circled there in yellow. The club offers a secure gated parking area and only members have access to that. There's an arrow indicating where the gate is. The club offers a private ramp and a private pontoon for loading and unloading uh, your passengers. Now that the main public ramps have pontoons as well, that becomes less of an attraction. So I guess the main reason for joining is if you go out overnight a bit or go away to camp on the islands, you have secure parking which is under video surveillance. I'll put a link in the description so that you can go to the club's website and see if it's something you might be interested in. The ramp area is also the home of the Raby Bay Volunteer Marine Rescue. So you can go in there and say hello to the guys and sign up as a member if you're not a member already. Being a member of the VMR or the Coast Guard is a good idea, particularly if you're going outside a little bit. This pontoon here is for the VMR only and is not open to the public. There's ample parking area for both trailers. I've been told that it can fill up but I must be lucky because every time I've been there, I've had no trouble getting a park. There's not much in the way of parking provided if your passengers arrive in their own cars. There's actually three car parks available for them. The solution that some passengers use is to utilise the trailer parking furthest away from the ramps. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that because if the trailer parking happens to fill up, you're going to have some very angry boaters around and you could possibly get a fine. As you drive in, try and assess which is the busiest part of the complex and naturally go to the part that's not busy. The arrows show where you would turn if you're planning to use the old ramp area. The yellow lines here show the areas where you would normally prepare your boat to launch so that you don't tie up the ramp unnecessarily. If it's not busy, you can parallel park along the roadway and just prepare your boat quickly. If it is busy, it's best to pull into one of the trailer parks and prepare your boat there. Then you can reverse out and continue down the ramp for launching. This arrow shows the position where everyone usually queues up for access to the old ramp. Now this can create a little bit of frustration if the guy in front is waiting for a particular lane on the ramp and the other two lanes are empty but it generally creates more chaos if someone decides to push your way past and use one of the empty lanes than it does just to sit there and wait for him to move. There's one lane on the bay side of the pontoon and two lanes on the land side of the pontoon. This used to be a four lane ramp and the pontoon takes up one of those lanes but it really is a great addition. Coming into what I call the new ramp, you go a little bit further along William Street before you turn down towards the water. There's areas available on the site for preparing your boat before you launch it. And the same things I said about the old section apply to this section for preparing your boat. There's a single lane down either side of the pontoon and it's a good idea to have one of your passengers stand up on the pontoon with the painter from the boat so that they can catch it as it comes off the trailer and tie it up against the pontoon. You'd normally need a rope fore and aft or a long painter that you can wrap around one of the bollards and back to the aft end of the boat. Again the arrow shows the position where everyone queues to use the ramp and 
If someone's recovering a boat, they will need one side of the pontoon or the other, depending on which side they've tied their boat to. So a little bit of patience is sometimes required here as well. On a nice calm day, all I do is grab the painter from the front of the boat, put a second rope on the back of the boat and get one of my passengers just to hang on to both ropes and walk down the pontoon as I push the boat or it's a piece of cake to launch a boat here at Cleveland. And when you come back in, ideally you want to go straight onto the pontoon and tie up there or go and get your trailer, bring it down and just wait the boat straight on. But sometimes when it's busy, that's not possible, and you do need to beach your boat while you wait for a turn. So there's four beaches available for that, and two of them are tide dependent. One of them has fist-sized rocks there, and you wouldn't want to come anywhere near them with the bottom of your boat. But if you pick the right tide, there is a tiny band of sand there that will work out for you. But mainly, there's two largish areas of sand. Stick with them, and you'll be quite fine. The yellow lines here mark the area that you would use to prepare your boat for travelling on the road again after you get it out of the water. And the same rules apply for the, as for the preparation area. If the area is not busy, you can parallel park. A lot of people do. Just keep your eye out if anyone wants to get their trailer out. Normally, I pull into one of the bays, prepare my boat for travelling back out again, and off I go. It's the same deal over in the new ramp area for packing up your boat after you get it out of the water. The only thing I haven't messaged yet is that all traffic here is one way. There's arrows on the road marking which way you should be going. Do try not to go the wrong way down a one-way street. Now that we've had a good look at the ramp area, let's have a look at the places that I like to go when I use this ramp. The West Peel Artificial Reef is about two and a half nautical miles out and it takes me less than 10 minutes to get there. Horseshoe Bay is a beautiful spot for swimming or camping or just having a sleepover on your boat. It's six nautical miles away and takes less than 20 minutes for me to get there. Going over the South Passage Bar to one of the reefs outside is about 26 nautical miles and takes me about an hour and 15 minutes to get there and set up for fishing. In general, I use Cleveland if I'm going anywhere to the east or northeast of the Cleveland ramp. If I'm going further north, I generally go further north for one of the ramps up there, but I have taken the 7 metre hydro field from Cleveland all the way up to Cape Morton. As a rule, I don't go south of Cleveland if I launch there, because there's other ramps that are more convenient down that way. Now, a word of caution coming into and out of the harbour, the channel is quite narrow and it is very shallow off to the sides, so do make sure you collar the beacons and watch your sounder. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you haven't used the Cleveland Raby Bay ramp before, I hope it encourages you to do so. You can go to my channel if you'd like to see more of my videos. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time, good fishing.